I just got done packaging a PR box and going through some to-do items and I feel like I'm back in the swing of things. If you're new here, my name is Laura. I share my healthy hair journey. I just started a new micro lock journey. I used to have small traditional locks. I am the owner of a natural hair care e-commerce brand called Vita Naturals that specializes in plant-based hair care for textured strands. For those who supported Vita Naturals, I wanna be extremely grateful. I really do. A lot of the individuals who purchase from Faida are from YouTube. I want to take a moment just to thank you for your business. Thank you for your support. Words cannot explain how much you mean to me, how much the support has been really impactful in my journey as a small business owner. To be completely honest, the end of last year, I got to a point where I was like, do I want to do this anymore? Do I not? Just because there was a lot going on in my world. But seeing the orders come in consistently and this this week, oh my goodness, you all have really, really done it. This week I've had orders that I was not expecting to have and you continue to support Faida on an ongoing basis. Thank you for believing in the brand. Thank you for supporting the brand and thank you also for your feedback. I have amazing folks who will reach out via email and just share how they're experiencing the brand and I'm forever grateful for that. So in today's video, it's gonna be a little bit different. Last year I shared that I wanted to share some small business content with you all. I thought we'd be, it'd be good to start off the year by offering some advice to somebody who might be interested in starting a business, whether it's a hair care business, whatever it is. I think these tips will be really helpful because I wish I had these tips before I started. It's 2024. It's a new year. We're not sitting on those goals and the things that we wanted to do before, the things that we've been scared to do. So here's some tips that are going to help you with your small business journey. I wrote them all down here on a piece of paper. So I want to make sure that I say everything that I wanted to say. I really took time to think through things that would have been helpful for me to know and things that would have helped me with starting off my small business. I think you all know that I believe in God and you may be coming on this channel. Maybe your faith in God is strong. Maybe you don't have a belief in God, but that's where I get a lot of my principles and a lot of my perspective from. So if that's something that's not your vibe, I hope that you'll stick around. Otherwise, if it is, then great. We get to grow and produce whatever the Lord has placed in our lives, which is really a starting point is understanding that all of us were designed to create whatever that looks like. We're all creators and God gives us the ability to make wealth for ourselves. We're all gifted in different ways. Every idea that we get is not just an idea that happens by chance. The Lord places those ideas in us, assuming that it's a good idea. Maybe there's something that you've been thinking about doing for a while and you feel like, should I do it? Should I not? Is this going to work? To be completely honest with you, I wanted to do hair since high school. I started off with doing hair out of curiosity. I learned how to braid hair and do people's hair. Um, I learned via on YouTube because I just had a natural interest in it. Beauty was really interesting to me. I actually had a, a, a breaking moment when I went to Kenya, where I'm originally from, and I noticed at that time I saw a lot of people with natural hair when I was in the remote areas, and I just gained an appreciation for natural hair, which was different from what I was used to, and here I was going to a predominantly white school, and I was used to wearing my weave and whatever it was, so when I came back, I just had this awakening and cut my hair short, and that really started my natural hair journey from then I got rid of the perms I got rid of whatever and I just dove deep into the world of natural hair care so for me hair care goes beyond something that's vain hair care really has to do with our identity as women of color and providing solutions that are healthier and helping us maintain our hair and boosting our confidence because that's something that has been a challenge for many 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 generations and people are taking advantage of the ignorance with embedding different products and the things that we use and all we want to to do is just maintain our hair. Our hair is not a problem. There's nothing wrong with it, but I can go down a rabbit hole with that. So the first thing is, as you're starting your business, really figure out your why. We hear this idea of find out your why, find out your why. The best way that I could describe it is who benefits from you doing what you're doing? What is the cause behind it? It could be anything. You could be selling pencils, could be selling cars, you could be selling whatever. Figure out what your why is and why you're doing the thing that you're doing. And the reason why people like to hype this up so much is it's going to keep you going 
for a really long time. At times when I feel low and when I feel like I don't want to go on with business, I remember young me who didn't know how to take care of my hair, who was experimenting and, and was so frustrated with having all these products in my bathroom and not knowing what to do with my hair and just feeling so overwhelmed. Understand your why. What drives you to do this? Who suffers if you don't have this business? And that will really help. The next thing is presentation matters. If I were to start a brand this year, I would study what other brands are doing well. I would go beyond studying brands in my industry. So for me, I'll use examples for hair care because that's what's familiar to me. But I wouldn't just look at hair care products. I would look at some a brand like Apple. I like how sleek the products are, how the packaging is made with really nice material. And I would study what you like about the brands that you enjoy purchasing from. The feel, what, you, what feel you get when you open up the packages. You really want to solidify what the customer experience is going to be and learning how to articulate that as well because as you work with graphic designers as you work with web designers as you work with content creators it's going to be really important that you can articulate your vision to those people and it's okay if it changes because for me my packaging has changed my branding has changed i've changed my logo already i may change it until i land on something but Keep in mind the things that you enjoy about other brands. Purchase from brands and look at their packaging and see how you feel and compare. I used to save little inserts that come in packages from brands that I really liked. Like if I opened up a package and I particularly liked something, I would keep a folder of all those little inserts, whether it was like a thank you note or whether it was an about us little card. I would keep that and keep that in mind as I was going through my branding process and figuring out what Faida would look so I would spend a lot of time in figuring out who you are as a brand. Now, I want to say that selling low cost things is not your identity as a brand. So offering something that let's say other people are offering this for $10 and I'm going to offer it for $5. That is not your brand identity. I would really push you to think about how you're positioned within the industry. So what makes you unique? What message do you have? Who specifically do you serve and get as specific as you can? Once you've solidified that, then you're ready to move on to the more logistical pieces like creating your Instagram handles, your web site and all of that which is a given the next thing is i would commit to showing up i would set up a plan where for one year straight you're going to do something every week make sure the plan is realistic because especially if you're a person who's not big on social media like i was i'm still struggling when it comes to social media it's still a growth area for me but i would really take time to understand the different platforms and identify the main platform that's going to work for you where you're going to show up for me youtube makes sense for me because i already have a community here and this is where i can show up consistently i'm now branching out into instagram and TikTok, but figure out a main platform that you're you're going to master, you're going to understand, and then be present on as many platforms as you're able to. You can always repurpose content, but have a plan to do it. Whether it's a calendar to hold yourself accountable, whether they're reminders, you're going to have to have a mindset that says this year for 365 days, this is how many days I'm going to show up online. If nobody knows who you are and that you exist, no one's going to purchase from you. So it's going to be important that you show up. I had to have a healthier relationship relationship with social media because I was one of those people that's like anti-social media and I'm still growing in it as well. Um, I think this year I'm trying my best to show up a little bit more. I don't know why it was easier to show up when it came to like YouTube, but when it came to my business, it was a little bit challenging, but try and show up. There's no other way your business is going to get recognized out there unless you plan on doing pop-up shops or in-person events, but you will have a greater reach the more that you show up. It is surprising the posts that I've posted that have yielded a lot of revenue for me. Sometimes it's the ones that I think that are not going to be that great, are not going to do so well compared to the ones that I take extra time to do. So in the beginning, when you're starting, I would focus on progress over perfection. Your packaging is going to change. A lot of things are likely to change as you continue to learn and as you continue also to see what that feels like for you. So make sure you're consistent and progressing over creating something that's perfect. Of course, course, keeping in mind that you want to make sure that your customer experience is good and you're offering your best self. 
Take feedback from your customers as well. Open the door to be able to learn. How are they receiving the products? How are they liking the products? What's the smell like? I changed the top of my shampoos because of a, a customer feedback. I'm gonna show you it. Originally, I used to have these caps over here for the shampoos. And then because of ongoing customer feedback, I changed it to the twist nozzle. And this just allows for the customers to be able to get the products on their scalp a little bit better. Be open and open up the door for customer feedback. I would even push it as far as take time to get feedback and set aside specific emails or whether it's on social media polls so you can hear back from your customers because it doesn't make sense if you create a product that people aren't so enthused about or people have some challenges with. So I would encourage you to set up polls, whether it's on Instagram makes it really easy. You can use the YouTube platform on the community tab to ask questions. Ask your customers about how they're experiencing your brand. And that's something that I hope to do a little bit more this year. Price accordingly. And I really wish I did this. Remember earlier when I said that being affordable is not part of your brand? If people value something, they're going to be willing to pay for it. There's a reason why we would go to Target over Walmart, even though the prices are going to be cheap because you like the experience of it. So I would really challenge you to look at the pricing of everything. Take into consideration your shipping costs as you price your product. Take into consideration your product costs, everything that goes into packaging, including your cards, including your packaging tape, your boxes, the tissue, um, that the stuff that goes into, into the box, the filler stuff, that is going to to cost, it's gonna add to your profit margin. So sit down with a pen and paper and calculate the cost of everything that goes into shipping that product and creating it, and then price accordingly where a profit margin would make sense for you. Understand finances. If you need to get a Google spreadsheet to start off with, if you need to write it on a piece of paper, know what's coming into your business and know what's going out of your business. It's gonna be important that you understand the accounting of business, understand when taxes are due, understand write-offs. I would encourage you to keep a notebook where every time you spend something towards your business, start writing things off. Um, you could also look up lists of write-offs and just keep in mind as you're spending things, whether it's mileage, whether you're using space in a home, all those things are write-offs during tax time during your business. Understand financials because that's why we're in business, to make money. If you don't know where your numbers are, if you don't know how you're doing, then it'll be really hard. And also come up with a system to track your inventory as well. Shopify, if you use that as a platform as your website, website host does a really good job of helping you manage your inventory. But if you're selling in person too, you'll need to make sure that you're keeping track of how your inventory is impacted by those in-person sales. Also understand the fees that are associated with running a business. If you have a website host, that's going to be a fee. If you choose to have a virtual business address, that's going to be a fee. Your shipping labels are going to be a fee. There are lots of fees associated if depending on the platforms you choose to host on, whether it's on Etsy versus Shopify, there's a fee that goes into that. Understand the fees that are associated with running your business. I would recommend starting on a low cost and then working your way up. So to get things started as free as you can and as low as inventory you can purchase initially, I would start off there. I may even recommend doing a pre-order where you build up a hype on social media, have people pre-order a product so you can know exactly how many to get. One mistake that I made is I ordered a lot of product when I started my business and I had to push it out. I was able to get it out, but it took work and it took consistency. But if you're starting off, start small and work your way up because you could always use your profit to come back and reinvest in your business. Separate your business finances. I highly recommend credit union as great places to go, but research and see what works best for you as far as a business bank account. Start slow and work up. You're not going to be like your competitors or the person who's been doing this for 10 years right away. It's gonna take some time. You might have some issues with your labels. Like I've had labels that bled through when water hit, they were not waterproof. I've had boxes that broke via shipping. It's all a learning process. And I would come in with the mindset of readiness to learn. You're gonna be doing a lot of problem solving when a customer doesn't receive their package or when they receive a 
package and the condition it didn't come in, or maybe there's a glitch in the system, you're going to have to make sure that you have a mind that's always ready to problem solve and willing to learn. When social media changes, you're going to have to change your approach. There's so much that's changing. Entrepreneurship is great, but it also has more responsibilities than working a nine to five. But if this is something, this is why when I started off, I said, understand your wife. This is something you're passionate about. You will be motivated by that passion and that thing that the Lord has placed inside of you rather than it just being about profit. Because to be completely honest with you, if you're in business just to make money, it's really hard to stay motivated over the long haul. And that's just my perspective. Maybe some people are able to do it. But for me, I need to make feel like I'm making an impact and something is being done. You need something that's going to wake you up even in those hard moments where you have all these shipments to send out when you're low on inventory and have to quickly troubleshoot and figure out how to get your inventory in. There are a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that aren't really shared about running a business. Then a lot of costs that go into it, a lot of time that goes into it that's going to be really important that you understand before moving into it. Social media has a great way of showcasing the bright side of running a small business. Sometimes we see these packaging orders, we see these um, labeling or orders, we see all these videos around people's cute studios and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's actually work. You have to figure out your work-life balance. Businesses take a while to build. So in the beginning, it's going to feel like you're taking all your time towards it. Sometimes you have weeks where you have sales. You have weeks where you don't have sales. It's not for the faint at heart. Going into this, you want to position yourself to understand that you are going to make it in this business. Your business is going to blow up, but also manage your expectations knowing that in due time. It could happen within the age of social media. It could happen at any moment, but also understand that when you're starting something, you're in the beginning phase. So as you continue to go, you'll figure out how to talk to your customers better, how to speak their language, where they are, how to reach them, and then things will get better. Next is have a plan for taking care of your customers. I would even say manage or learn the art of written communication. If you think experience. I would think Chick-fil-A, like when you go where you may or may not like their food, but you know, you're going to get a good experience. I would figure out how are you addressing your customers? How are you communicating with them? How often are you communicating with them? This is also something that I needed to learn because with everything else going on in my life, I didn't realize that if that messages were coming through on Instagram and via email about different things concerning the products, which I completely appreciate. So learn how to engage with your customers, learn how to perfect your customer service, make sure you're respectful in your communication, make sure you're formal in your communication. You want to run your business as though this is a multi-billion dollar business as well. So you're not going to talk like, Hey, I'm sorry. What, what, what it's, Hey, we received your order and X, Y, and Z have in mind that you're already running your multi-billion dollar business and you're setting things up and you're working towards actually getting there. So mindset wise, you're already there. You just need the physical to match up with what you're already thinking of. Speak life over your business. Speak positive things over your business. Pray for your business. Commit your business to the Lord in prayer. Don't try to do this thing by yourself in your own ability. The word of God tells us that by strength, no man shall prevail, meaning that in our own ability, it's hard. You might get a business idea from God. You might get a content idea. A lot of the times when people blow up, it's one idea that comes up out of nowhere that seems a little bit off. If you're sensitive to the leading of the Lord, your business is going to blow up, especially if this is something that he's placed inside of your heart. So don't take this all in your own might in terms of planning and, and forward planning and, and setting a vision for what to do and next steps. Put it in the hands of God and you do your part, which is running the day to day in the operational side of the business. Next is to find your audience. Who are you talking to? Where are these people? What do these people do? What are these people concerned about? You need to speak a language to a specific person. If you speak to everybody, you may not have specific people come. You want to target whoever the product is for and you want to keep it as that. 
I know we want to make sales and we want to make this about everybody, but be very clear about who you want to serve and how you want to serve them. And if other people want to purchase your products, great, but you want to really understand your customer and their pain points and the things that they're challenged with and speak to that, speak their language so that you're better able to position your brand online and market the things that you are selling. Next is to study as I said before, study others. Take some time every week. Master the art of sales. If I were starting a business this year, I would read up on sales. I would watch videos on sales. Myron Golden is a great faith-based business coach that I would recommend. I'm going to link his channel below. Any person who talks about sales, you want to master the art of selling. You don't want to be in a position where you have this great product, but don't know how to communicate what it does to people or tell people about it, which was also a challenge for me because I always shy away from being salesy. I worked in retail when I was in high school many years ago, and I remember it being just the worst experience. And I said I would never sell anything once I got out of that. But if you have something that people need, if you view it not so much as selling, but offering a solution to a problem, it makes it easier to share whatever it is. The next thing that I would say is find a support system. Uh, what really helped me was knowing the people that I could go to whenever I was having challenges, whenever I needed support, whenever I even needed motivation. Um, people who are close to you, people who mean the best for you, not people who are going to tell you what um, you want to hear people who are really going to be honest with you about what you're doing and then those who are going to encourage you along the process it can be very lonely and isolating being an entrepreneur but it's always great to have the support people but with that in mind understand that you may not get support from the people who you would like to get support from and the best way i usually think about that is just knowing that the business is not necessarily for them it's nothing personal but you have a target audience who responds to the product and who's interested in the product don't go in expecting that family and friends are going to support you. And this is no shade or anything, but just understand that people support what is valuable and interesting to them. So if you're selling, I don't know, whatever it might be, notebooks, and you don't have people around you who may be interested in notebooks, the expectation shouldn't be that they're going to purchase your notebooks and whatnot. Just work on finding your target audience, but have your people that you can lean on. There's an online community of people as well, too. If you don't have people in your life who you can lean on. There are also others who can motivate you, who can encourage you as well. can be very lonely. I can't explain um, how how isolating it is, but it's good to have that support network. And I've really benefited from people who are doing something similar as this, who were able to talk about some of the challenges. The Small Business Administration also has coaching. I would say get support where needed and they have free business mentors. I would recommend that you connect and I will have the resource down, connect with somebody and usually you'll get connected with someone who's able to coach you and help you alongside, help you see things that you may not see usually they have expertise like I had a business coach last year who would offer me insight he worked in operations and he worked in corporate for many years and had great success with it so he would have me plan for for an influx of orders which was necessary because when I did get an influx of orders then I was able to fulfill them and I had enough inventory in sight he helped me with understanding how my messaging sounded and and he, he would push me I think that goes with would get a support system so i will um score the score i believe it's called score i will link the information below i would connect with somebody there they can help you from the point where you need to set up a business plan they can connect you with somebody who can start from there or if you're further along your journey they can connect you with somebody who is there. and these people are well connected too like my business mentor was connected to other people who knew other things so there are times where we would have calls and he would loop in somebody who who was good with marketing or somebody who was better with operations um somebody who was good with finance and then i would be able to ask questions and get insight again the attitude of learning has to be persistent and it has to be very strong in order for your business to be successful throughout i think that's what i have so far i will pause there but i hope this video was helpful to somebody and i hope that it motivates somebody to just get started if it means that you're doing one thing towards your business go ahead and do that one thing your dream is not going to end in 2024 
you're going to live it. You're going to experience it and you're going to see it. If, you, if you're interested in more content like this, go ahead and comment below. I'm thinking about doing a 21 day devotional for business, small business owners slash entrepreneurs, where daily we would go through certain things together and then we would motivate each other, encourage each other and share resources with each other as well. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you do have a business, I'd be interested to hear. If you have a business idea, please comment below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.